Could it be? Me, your man, Louis T. Well, to the 2017 NFL Draft Prospects 101 series, your guide to some of the biggest and the hottest names of the 2017 NFL Draft. We're talking linebackers. And this is a guy that has had so many different issues this draft offseason. It's not even funny. It seems like it's one thing after the other. And this guy has ranged from top 10 to top 15 to top 20 to out of the first round. And you don't really know where this guy is going to go because of all of the different things that have transpired with him throughout this process. But one thing's for sure, the guy is uber talented, has some issues, has some things that we're going to discuss. But one thing's for sure, the guy can run, the guy can hit, the guy can play football. I'm talking about Alabama linebacker Ruben Foster. Let's talk about Reuben Foster and why I think this guy should be a first round pick with his pros. We start with Reuben Foster and his physicality. Here's a guy that to me is a downhill thumper. If I've ever seen one, this guy brings his hard hat and lunch pail and is looking to smash somebody at just about every opportunity that he gets. Uh, I, I, I think about him in the very first game of the season, I'm watching him against USC, and there's one play where he reads the football going outside to the running back, and he just takes off, and he smokes the running back in the backfield, and uh, that's the type of football player that this guy is. He's, he's looking to go and really hit someone really hard and be physical. And he's willing to throw his body out there. And uh, we'll talk about the repercussions of that a little bit later on. But one thing's for sure, he plays with a level of reckless abandon that is fun to watch. Athleticism in burst is the next pro. Uh, don't actually know how fast he is. Because remember, th this is a guy that dropped 20 pounds this offseason uh, to become, or prior to the college football season, to become a much faster, more athletic linebacker. And you can see the difference. This is a guy that was walking around at around 240 uh, prior to last year, and he, and he played around, you know, in the 220s last year. So uh, this guy dropped a ton of weight and uh, was ultra effective because of it. Put on some weight at the combine uh, to show that he could bulk up, but this is a guy that can run. And so because of the whole combine situation and him being sent home, we don't actually know. I think he had uh, ran a 40 at, at the pro day that he had uh, for the scouts. But um, I, I heard it was 4'7", but he doesn't look like a 4'7". So I, I don't really know if my eyes are deceiving me, if that's an accurate time or what may have you. But none, nonetheless, the guy's athletically gifted. He can run, he can run sideline to sideline. That's for certain. And there's a burst there where he takes off, when he decides to shoot his gun, bang, he's gone, he's taking off, all right? And there's times where he shoots his gun, bang, bang, and he's in the backfield immediately. No, not immediately, immediately in the backfield. Now, he may not make the tackle, okay? Doesn't always make the tackle, but man, is he there in a flash, and so that is, uh, that's, again, fun to watch, fun to watch a guy take his gun, shoot it, and get in the backfield before the quarterback and running back even know what the hell is going on. Closing speed. I talked about him shooting his gun and how fast he gets there. I talked about the USC game. There are countless, um, there are countless um, times where I saw this guy shoot into the backfield or, or go out into the flats and make a play, close on a guy. His closing speed is ridiculous. There's a play against Tennessee where Joshua Dobbs is looking to get outside the pocket. He blitzes up the field. Dobbs realizes, I got to get out of here. The pocket is starting to close at a rapid rate. And he takes off running, and Reuben Foster closes the distance from behind, dives, and, and corrals Joshua Dobbs, which is no easy feat. And, and that, to me, is just another example of him having closing speed, the ability to go and close the distance between he and the ball carrier and do it in a very fast manner. 
Um, he, he's really athletic and, and again, a lot of fun to watch. I love watching guys fly around the football field and Ruben Foster is definitely one of those guys. Speaking of which, aggressiveness. Um, he, he's an alpha male. He's one of those guys that's looking to exert his physicality and will over you. He wants to show you that I'm tougher than you. So he's going to come and he's going to be reckless. And, he, and he's one of those guys that's like, hey, I don't care about me. If I don't care about me, what does that mean for you? He's so aggressive. He's looking to put a hat on a hat. Um, sometimes he'll just go blow a defender up uh, uh, or a blocker up just, just because. Hey, look, you're in the way. I'm going to blow you up. And uh, he, he's a physical, aggressive guy. He's playing into the whistle. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. He, he's a guy that is just aggressive in nature. And that's what you want out of a linebacker. Period, point blank, end of discussion. You don't want your linebackers pussyfooting around, dancing around blocks. And he'll do that from time to time. But you, you want a guy that's aggressive, that's playing to the whistle, that wants to hit somebody. And uh, Ruben Foster is that kind of football player. Fluidity out in space. We don't talk enough about fluidity out in space. This is so important. If you're talking first round linebacker, you must, all caps, M-U-S-T, must be fluid out in space. There's nothing worse than a linebacker who is stiff in the hips and is afraid out in space, a fish out in water. You can always tell a guy who's afraid out in space, who's not comfortable out in space, when you see them and that running back is coming at them and that running back has a choice route and he can break him off, stick his foot in the, in the ground, give him a stick move, and that linebacker is pissing his pants watching that line, that running back come at him and stick his foot in the ground and he has no clue whether he's going outside, inside, or he's going up the field. And uh, a guy like Ruben Foster, he's not afraid, okay? You can come doing all your stick moves and all of that. He's gonna wait you out and wherever you decide to go, he's gonna be right there on your hip. And so uh, I love his fluidity out of space. I love his change of direction. He's a guy that you just feel comfortable out in space being able to run with these running backs out of the backfield, be able to change direction. Um, had a play in the USC game. Again, I keep referencing this game. I thought he was phenomenal in that game where um, they try to throw the football on a shallow cross to the tight end and he's just not having it. And he, he runs the, the route for the tight end, deflects the football into the air. It's picked off by Marlon Humphrey who takes it into the end zone for a touchdown. And that's the kind of play that he can make. It's just really fluid out in space and great cover skills, which is the next pro. And, and uh, to me, uh, one of the things that separates him from a lot of these linebackers in this draft is the fact that he can cover out in space and a lot of these guys simply can't. And in the league today, where we see the passing game becoming more and more prevalent, you gotta have linebackers that can run, you gotta have linebackers that can cover. Okay, this is a league that is predicated on moving the football a lot more through the air than ever before. Tight ends are becoming more prevalent. Running backs that can catch are becoming more prevalent. You got to be able to have linebackers that can counterbalance and counteract these athletic tight ends and running backs who are catching the football out of the backfield, who are being split out wide, who are being put in the slot. You need guys that can run in space, who are comfortable dropping. He gets into his zones and he dro his drops are so effortless. He's so comfortable out in space. He gets good depth on his drops. Uh, he's a guy that is just comfortable out in coverage as well. Tremendous blitzer. Uh, five sacks last year at Alabama. A guy that, like I said, when he shoots his gun and blitzes, if he's not blocked, if you keep this guy clean, he's a problem. End of discussion, okay? And that goes for blitzing as well. When you don't block him, he's either going to hit your quarterback for a sack He's going to hit your quarterback, period, or he's going to make your quarterback uncomfortable to the point where he may do something he will regret. So uh, this is a guy that will come like a bat out of hell flying through the line of scrimmage. If he's not touched, this guy is going to be a problem. He's a tremendous blitzer, does a really good job of timing up blitzes as well. So um, that's another uh Thing you get with Reuben Foster as a football player. Relentless and balls to the wall is the final pro for me. 
Uh, this guy's, like I said, from the time the whistle is blown to when the football is snapped to when that whistle is blown again, uh, this guy just goes 110 miles an hour. If there was a comp for me uh, watching him play football, it would be Russell Westbrook on a basketball court. How Russell, Russell Westbrook is just emptying the tank when he's on the court. 110 miles an hour, he doesn't know a, a different speed. I, I see Ruben Foster as that kind of guy uh, in terms of how fast he's playing. Is it always a good thing? No, we'll talk about that. But nonetheless, that's all he knows is 110 miles an hour going that way. And uh, that's fun to watch. Like I said, it's not always the best thing for his team and, and for that particular play, but it's just fun to watch. Um, in any event, though, that's Ruben Foster and all the things that I feel like he brings to the table and why this guy has first round written all over him. Now we're going to talk about why he might not go in the first round or why he's going to at least fall a little bit further than he probably should in this draft. Let's talk about Ruben Foster and his cons. So I've talked Ruben Foster and his aggressiveness. Now let's talk about the flip side of that. Over aggressiveness is the first con. This is a guy that you can get on play action fake. I mean, he's one of these guys that if you fake that, if you fake as a quarterback that football into the belly of a running back, you got him. He is going to bite hook, line, and sinker. If you're going bootleg and you're play action and off of that, you got him. He's going to bite inside and you're going to have that tight end running nice and free out in the flats with that fullback leaking out into the flats wide open. He's very aggressive. Very aggressive. Over aggressive to the point that you can get him. There's times where he will go and hit the running back who does not have the football because of a fake. And he didn't even go and assess the situation and see if it was a fake. He just said, oh, running back's getting the football. I'm going to light him up. And quarterback's three yards the opposite way, and he's looking to throw the football down the field. So uh, he's a guy that can be very over-aggressive, find himself out of position at times. Um, you, you fake a screen one way, and you're looking to throw the screen back the other way. You got it. He's going to go. Uh, he's a guy that will bite the bait. He will chase the cheese. And uh, you can fake him out and get to where you really want to go, which is I want to set this screen up on the opposite side of the field. So um, he's a guy that... I think really is going to be best served as a weak side for a three linebacker. I don't know necessarily if you want him on the inside of a 3-4 defense. We'll see what happens. Um, but in this day and age with teams playing nickel so often, I don't even know if that's really something you need to concern yourself with uh, that much. But nonetheless, let's go on to his next con. Does it read and react fast enough? And uh, for a guy that is as athletic as he is, we, we, we've heard the, the rumor and uh, this is uh, probably more fact than rumor because when the player himself actually comes out and says, hey, look, man, I'm not the best on the whiteboard, that tells you all you need to know. We, we've heard about his X's and O's dilemma and how he's not the smartest guy on the whiteboard. And um, from a scheme uh, standpoint, he's not the most sound in, in his principles. Uh, look, I'm all for guys knowing where they're supposed to be and being able to line other guys up. But he's such an athlete, you just want him on the field. But this is the thing, he doesn't read and react fast enough for me. Um, he doesn't diagnose, okay, this is a pass, let me get into my drop fast enough. Oh, it's play action fake, let me go ahead and get my depth properly. Um, sometimes I just think it takes him a little bit longer to diagnose what he sees. Because once he shoots his gun, he's gone. But sometimes he could make more plays um, I'll give you an example. There's a screen being thrown and sometimes it takes him a little bit longer to identify a screen. Okay, let me get out here and blow this thing up. And so he'll get there a little bit late. That lineman will get out there out in front of the screen and now he's got to sort through a bunch of traffic and, he, and it's tough for him because at 230 pounds, he's not the biggest guy in the world. And so uh, that's what I'm talking about. Instead of him being there and being proactive, and already on the scene when the football gets out there, he's getting to the party a little bit later. So don't think he read and reacts well. And I think that kind of goes in unison with him not being the best on the whiteboard. Medical. 
This is another thing that's scaring some teams right now. He's had a number of stingers because he doesn't see what he hit. He's the guy that will lower his head and uh, come down and be reckless. And like I said, he'll put his body out on the line, uh, but he's had stingers because of that. And so uh, that's something that you're going to have to concern yourself with because I, as a Redskins fan, have seen a promising career come to an end in a rookie season because of a stinger, and he's done, okay? And uh, it sucks. So that's something that teams must be wary with, and, and I think that's what they are right now, and that's why you're seeing, in addition to some of the off-the-field issues, which is the final con, character concerns. We know about the blow-up at the combine that got him sent home. We know about the diluted sample at the combine. Um, again, these are all things that you gotta take into consideration. Um, is this guy a weed smoker? Don't know. I, I can't answer that. Probably is, but again, I don't wanna assume. But you, you, you pair that up with the medical concerns, and I think some teams are gonna be scared away from a guy that is an uber athlete that can play the game of football in Reuben Foster. We'll see what happens with him at the next level come draft day. Um, I think he's still coming off the board day one, folks. And it wouldn't shock me if he still came off the board in the top 15 picks. But that's Reuben Foster and his Draft Prospects 101 breakdown if it happens in the National Football League. Whether big or small, we cover it all here on the Louis T Network. More breakdowns coming your way. I'll see you a little bit later on. Have a good one.